Pretty freaking good. Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. Today, I got some stuff to do. I got some tasks to achieve, but today I wanted to talk to y'all about the steps, the phases, the process of becoming a filmmaker. Maybe not these steps, but my steps. I feel like a lot of y'all might relate to this or might've gone through some of the same phases. And I also feel like there's a lot of kind of intangible knowledge and wisdom is a strong word to use, especially when talking about yourself. It feels a little bit big headed, which is part of the phases that we'll talk about. But I feel like there's some things at the very least that I can reflect on and look at and maybe you'll get some value out of it too. So let's break down the phases of becoming a filmmaker. After I eat the rest of this burrito, this burrito is great. First errand on the list, I gotta go get some gas in this gas can. One of the cars is out of gas. That's why I'm not just driving the car. Okay, so the first phase, I'm gonna title it the need to learn. This is right when you discover that you like video or photo or whatever kind of creative thing that you're into. In my case, it was late high school, early college when I really decided to do video and that all came from watching people on YouTube. Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon, like the same people that everybody who started doing video in 2016 really looked up to and really watched. And I'm titling this need to learn specifically because between being so passionate about this new craft, this new thing that I had found and all of the information that was available to learn from online, there was really just this uncontrollable urge to like watch every tutorial that I could, learn every new technique that I could. I mean, basically spread myself so thin between all of these different techniques because I was just like super hungry to learn and to get better. So obviously the positive aspect of this phase of the journey is you're learning a lot. It's very much of an exponential curve, I feel like, at the beginning where you're learning all of this new information, you're learning all these new techniques, you're learning how to expose video properly, which let me do that a little bit better right here. You're learning shutter speed and camera settings and all of these technical things that pretty much make you better than the average person just in a few weeks and a few months. And it was awesome and it feels good and it feels good to grow and it feels good to learn. And I feel like that learning and that growth then just fuels the hunger and fuels the passion and you're like, oh, well, my videos look this much better now. How good are they going to look a year from now? And it was a really fun time. I feel like that phase also has a major downside, but it kind of plays into the next phase. So we'll talk about that in a second, but let's move on to kind of phase two. And I'm going to title this one, the need to prove yourself. So picture this, you've got all these new skills. You think all of your stuff looks super dope, but does it really, does it really look that good? Can you really prove to anybody that you're good at this new thing that you do? Okay, sorry, I had to do a little work phone call, but I think that's all for my errands today. So let's just focus on these phases and finishing this conversation. So the need to prove yourself. So this 
phase of my life was not fully, but somewhat defined by really wanting people to see that this is something that I could do, really wanting my family to see that video was a career path or something that I was good at and really wanting other people in the industry, especially in Birmingham, to be like, oh, do you know Dustin? Like, he's good at this video thing. <laughs> this is also a period in my life where I remember video being just way too much of my identity, like putting way too much of my self-worth, way too much of my identity and who I am into what am I making and what do people think about what I'm making and how many views is it getting, which I think is a pretty big negative aspect of this time of my life and the journey as a whole. And that's what I was alluding to earlier. I feel like in these early stages where I was super passionate, I was super hungry and just putting so much of myself into video, a lot of good came out of that, a lot of growth came out of that, but also a lot of probably unhealthy mental habits came out of that. But one, people aren't always gonna like what you make, and two, you might not always have energy to be making stuff. I know there were a lot of times where I didn't have energy emotionally or mentally to make stuff, and that still, makes me feel like crap because I feel like some part of me is tied to like, oh, I'm not doing anything if I'm not putting out videos. I'm not doing anything if I'm not getting better. I'm not doing anything if I'm not getting more clients. And that is not just a video problem. That's an internet creator artist problem that I know a lot of y'all probably struggle with too. But over the years, separating that as much as I can from my identity has definitely helped. Another interesting part of this phase is this is kind of the fake it till you make it phase, or at least it was for me. It was de it was definitely a time in my life where I was way more confident in myself than I had any right being. Me and Jacob talk about this all the time, but like looking back to whatever, 2018, 2019, we just thought we were so good. And not in a way where we were like jerks about it. Like we weren't big headed, at least like outwardly. I feel like I was maybe a little bit entitled. Maybe I had a little bit of that, like why, why aren't people seeing the work I'm making and being impressed by it and hiring me and blah, 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 blah. It's because I was a beginner still. Like I had a lot to learn and I had a lot of growth to still do. But also I feel like a lot of good came out of that too. There's something helpful about being blissfully ignorant of the level I was at at that point or being blindly confident and having this kind of blind faith in my own abilities and my own skills at that point because it helped me to keep going. If I was explicitly aware of how unknowledgeable I was at that point, maybe I would have gotten overwhelmed and just said, well, nope, I suck at this. It's too much to learn. I'm just going to stop. So maybe there is some good that came out of that kind of like, oh, I am video. Video is my heart and soul and it's all I'm going to do. I'm at a coffee shop every time I have a free day because Peter McKinnon loves coffee, so coffee must be good. Like, <laughs> it's very cringy to me now, like looking back on it, but if you've been there, you know what I mean by that. It helped me get to where I am now. It helped me get to these later phases that we'll talk about in a minute. But I am glad that I grew out of that. I think a good anecdote for this phase, and I've talked about it on the channel before, when I first got hired at a marketing agency, this is maybe like a year, year and a half into me like really committing to video. I went on my first shoot with my bosses, my directors, and in my head, not outwardly because I'm not like a jerk, but I remember in my head being like, oh, like I'm, I know what I'm doing. I could do this on my own. Like I know so much more than them. Very false, very false. I guess overall what I'm saying is I was definitely in a place where I needed to be humbled. I needed to kind of pull back the reins, take notice of all of the knowledge that I didn't have and know that I had a lot of learning to do. I'm not mad at it. It is what it is. Let's talk about phase three. I think we're gonna hang out here for the rest of the video if that's cool with y'all. Phase three, let's call it the need to make money. So I'd say this phase has two distinct parts. Part A is still kind of in those early phases where video is my whole identity and I really want to make it a job. Like I'm like, I'm only gonna be successful when video is my full-time job, specifically freelance video where I don't have a boss, I can make whatever I want. Still working on that part. It was a part of that obsession. It was a part of that hunger and that passion. A part of that dream was always like, I wanna be a freelance videographer. I want to be my own boss and make my own money. And I'm not gonna dive too deep into that because I feel like it carries all the same positive and negative aspects of 
the previous phase that we talked about. But part B starts January 2022 when I did quit my job at the marketing agency I was working at and went into full-time freelancing. This part fits into the need to make money because I needed to make money. Uh, the only way I was paying my bills at that point was getting video jobs and that's still the only way I'm paying my bills. It's been about a year and a half since I started doing freelance full-time and I feel like it really helped sober me and humble me a little bit more on what being a filmmaker or being in the video production world really is. Like back then, back when I was 21 and 22, it was this big dream that these people I watched on YouTube did. They make all their money making videos for other people, for themselves. And that's something that I really want to do. But over the last year and a half, freelancing has become something that is just very normal. Like I feel like my mindset on it is very sobered. And obviously you could say like, yeah, that's because I'm doing it and it's very mundane and it's part of my day to day. But it's also the people around me doing it. Now at this point, I personally talk to and know more people that are freelancers and own their own business than I know people who have nine to fives. And there's something kind of nice in that of like making it feel more normal because I feel like it feels much more attainable. If you're in that position where that freelancing lifestyle is something you really, really want and you really want to try, I would hope that that's encouraging because there's a lot of people doing it. It's not unheard of. It's not this thing that's super far out of reach. It is difficult and you do have to do a lot of work and a lot of growing. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, but this whole video is a little bit more conversational. It's a really interesting and very distinct place to be now a career film production, video production worker. Sometimes you take jobs that you don't feel like doing, that aren't leading you anywhere closer to your artistic and creative desires or your overall goals, but you gotta take the job to make the money. And then sometimes you take the jobs and they're everything you've wanted them to be. You're getting to shoot, you're getting to be on set with people that are just way smarter than you and very gracious with their time and their knowledge and you're learning a lot. You're having fun because there's just a lot of sets, there's just a really good energy and atmosphere, at least where I, what I've been on, which is mostly smaller sets, I will say that. And you're learning new skills. Like every other job that I do, I'm being asked to do something that I've never done before, which is stressful. But it's also like pretty dope because there's a lot of stuff that I did last year that I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. I've done that before. It's cool. And these aren't mutually exclusive phases. I'm still in the need to make money phase and I still deal with both the ups and the downs of that phase. But that leads me to kind of where I am now. And that overall brings us into the next phase, which is the need to express yourself. I've been thinking about this and I guess you could also call it the artist phase. And I know a lot of people that this is where they start. They start as an artist. They start wanting to express themselves and tell stories. I, I would imagine these are the people that they learn storytelling and all of their early work or short films that maybe don't look technically the best because they didn't dive into like camera technical stuff and lighting and all of that. They dove into telling stories. I kind of did it the opposite way where I dove into the technique and the visuals that I could create before getting into really expressing how I feel through video or film or whatever you want to call it. Now I'm at a place where anytime I want to make a YouTube video, I just think about how I'm feeling and whatever crap is going on in my life that I want to get out to the world and how I make something that is like, hey, I'm sad, but not like just me being like, hey, I'm sad. And that's super cool because I've never really been an artsy person and I'm bad at it because I've never done it, but I really just want to tell stories, whether those are my stories or other people's stories. I just want to make people feel something when they watch my stuff. I want to make people happy or sad or laugh or whatever. Like that's what drives me, I guess, at this point. The need to express myself is what is up next and I'm very excited about it. I feel like it's very difficult and I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to write. I don't know how to do certain things, but like, here we are again. It's just time to learn. It's time to make some stuff. That's really why I wanted to make this video. Like that's the whole point of this video is I just wanted to kind of hang out and talk to y'all about where I am mentally as, as a creator. But it's not as a creator, it's just as a person. Like where I am mentally as a person and kind of what I think about as I go throughout my day. I wanna tell stories. 
Uh, y'all, I hope this was enjoyable for y'all. I hope that I edited this rambling down into something valuable and enjoyable and insightful for y'all. If I did, please hit like down below. I feel like this is a really good conversation topic. So let me know in the comments if you've been through any of these phases, if you resonate with anything that I'm talking about and kind of where you are now. Like I said, I know a lot of people with way less years of experience than me that started at that kind of artist phase and I look up to a lot of them and I love their work and I think that I can kind of tell that they're trying to tell stories. So. I'd love to talk to you about it regardless of where you are in your journey. Let's chat down in the comments and I'll see y'all next week. Thank you for listening to me. See ya.